to sort of first of all just tell us a little bit about your your background and your relationship with water and all that kind of stuff just growing up and things like that absolutely thanks uh, first of all scott for inviting me in um great to meet you, meet everyone uh, rachel uh, paul nikki thank you so much for having me at blue tonic i really do appreciate that it's, it means a lot um i've always had a good relationship with water um I know we were talking about the questions about when I was a kid growing up. I remember it does take me back to all the good memories because my uncle and my auntie used to take me water in the local pool on Fridays, which was the strangest thing. But I remember it was a small private pool that they went to and I used to just do laps while they were talking and were their old friends and I'd just be up and down like a little fast fish. I just remember doing that as a kid. But most of my holidays, I'll always remember... And I'm not saying it was blue water back then. It was Blackpool. <laughs> going to Blackpool. And I've been, I used to always go into the water in Blackpool. And the water is so much clean, cleaner in Blackpool now. But yeah, I've always been a fan of the water. And I was trying to think of the times when I was growing up, because I'm actually from Barnsley originally. So we were on the River Don. Now, again, I can't think of any blue water I've ever seen on the River Don, because it was brown water from the steelworks. Yeah. But we used to go in. We used to go in and we used to fish, but I can't think there was blue water because I know we were talking about the relevance of blue water and how healing that blue water is. I think well, that I, was, I grew I grew up um, my my family of Doncaster, so yep. yeah, when we used to come from the coast to the to the river, I always remember people saying, I don't know if it was just my grand granddad frightening me out of the water, but he was saying something like it was the dirtiest river in England at one point or something. It probably is. Well, I think they've done a lot to clean it up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but that was your stomping ground. That was, yeah. So Penniston and Home Firth is my stomping ground. Yeah. Uh, now, Home Firth is very close to where last... I, everyone always remembers last of the summer line. Yeah, yeah. That was that was the surrounding area, which was all farms and, and countryside. So we had... We did the Blue Lagoon. Again, the Blue Lagoon was a, was a quarry at the top of the hill that had been filled in, and it was a sheep dip. Uh, things so there was dead sheep at the bottom so I can't see I've had that good connection with water but we used to dive off the top of the quarry into the water and it was only blue because they put a dye in to get rid of the actual colour of the natural water <laughs> you've got a really good immune system though I, and I would put that down to dip in now in all fairness I would genuinely I, honestly I started dipping when, when lockdown happened um, and, and to talk about the story of dipping, I mean, I was one of those people that were that like, cold therapy. You're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. What are you doing getting in the water? But I started walking Munro's because in when lockdown happened, because of, I mean, going back, I mean, I'll, I'll open up to absolutely everyone. Ten years ago now, I had a, I had a massive nervous breakdown. Huge nervous breakdown. Completely, I just couldn't completely locked up in here with all the thinking uh, my mental health was an absolute mess and everything like that and I'm not going to tell you that dipping saved my life it was actually meditation that saved my life because my wife said whatever you're going through is absolutely starting to affect me so I just thought well no it's just my thoughts and my, my mental health but I was affecting people around me because of mood swings and all those kind of things but it wasn't a good place but getting to the dip, so I got into meditation and meditation just absolutely changed my life. So when, because of how I've had to train myself and how I've, I've gone through things, when lockdown happened and you've got everything going on on the news, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Everyone's mental health is going to take a massive dip. If you are not aware of how bad the news is and you're listening to it on a daily basis, there is nothing positive in there. So you can see why people's mental health took a dip. But what happened for us because of the, the training that I've done for myself is, well, all right, fair enough. There's a list of everything I can't do. I'm the kind of person that goes, right, what can I do then? Well, no, I can still go for a walk. I can still go for a bike ride. I can still do this. And I can still do this. And I actually got tyres in my back garden. I found tyres when I was going out walking. And I just brought them home and started hitting tyres. So I actually lost a lot of weight in the lockdown, which is kind of the opposite to everyone else. But that was just a mindset thing. But I'd kept listening in, uh, into like um, cold water dip. And I'm like, no, that's just, no, I'm not doing cold therapy. And I just dipped once. And it was that one sip in for, it was literally 60 seconds. I think I counted 67 seconds. 
and I got out. I mean, that is the stupidest thing I have ever done. I am never, ever, ever, ever doing that again. And then about an hour later, <laughs> you got this feeling of euphoria because your body's kicked in. And I, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. And I have not been out of the water since. So it was thankfully to, to the lockdown. If I had tried something and had that mindset of, all right, we can't do all these things. What can I do? I would never have got in the water. And now I think, you know, for all those times when you see people, when, they, when they're dipping, I'm like, oh, look, I'm the silly, the silly, the silly. I think you're silly not to dip now because you do it and you know the benefits. And the benefits wow. and the healing aspects of it and your immunity. I've not been ill for about two years. Wow. Yeah. It's true. No, it definitely kicks things, it de definitely kicks things in in a different way, doesn't it? And stuff. And yeah, yeah what, what really sort of resonates there is, um, you know, public health push the five ways of well-being as, as things. And when I look at what you're sort of doing, you know, connecting, I don't know if you know the five ways of well-being, but it's like a broad sort of analysis of what people should be doing with their lives. But too many times they seem to get trapped by the things you're talking about with the news stories and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's about, you know, like making sure that we're connecting, that people are connecting with somebody or people learning new things um, giving something back, uh, being present and connecting to the actu actual present and getting out there and being a little bit active. It sounds like like what really attracts me about what you're doing, it's, a, it's that broad spectrum. You're sort of ticking all those boxes around the five ways of well-being. Do you know, I didn't even know I was, but I'm reading them now and I'm like, yeah, I, yes, yes. Yeah. And the times in my life when I've not been ticking those boxes and being present, number four, those times when I wasn't present because I was stuck in the past or I was anxious about the future. That's what created my overthinking. It was so self-debilitating. Um, and I, I've got total empathy for anyone that gets stuck with overthinking. And I do how to stop overthinking live classes in, in, in the monkey mind group, yeah. um, which is completely free because it's what will make those changes in your life. If you can get out of here and live, live outside in, in the real world, with everything going on, that's about being present. And I don't know if anyone's looked into Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now is one of those books that just changes. You're like, oh, I totally get it now. Totally get it. And it's, it's, it's the unfortunate part that I think you have to hit rock bottom sometimes before you can think, right, let's build yourself back up. And that's the same as dipping. Dipping, for me, and I, I did start dipping in ice last year when, when the water froze over, which was amazing, even more beneficial. Start off with 60 seconds. Come out of the way. That's that's the strand. We're going to talk about, I know we're going to talk about stress uh, coming up. That stress resilience is, you've got to head towards pain and the uncomfortableness. Because if you keep avoiding it, we as human beings avoid pain at all costs. Yeah. That's in our DNA. Your brain doesn't want pain. Any kind of trauma you've had in the past, it will remember the pain it's caused you and it will avoid it. It will keep your, your unconscious takes over and just keeps pulling you away. And that's what you're going to get when you go into the cold water, especially this time of year. And I would never suggest to anyone, oh, just go for a, a swim on your own and enjoy yourself in, in six degree water. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Go with someone else, go up to your knees, let your body adjust to it. Then go up to the to the to the nether regions, whatever you want to call it. I'm up in Scotland now, so I would call it the blue balls, uh, to be honest with you. And I've heard the ladies call it something. I'm not gonna. I don't know. I'm mean, allowed to say the things that the ladies call it. I thought frozen flaps was one of the funniest things I'd ever heard. <laughs> frozen flaps, and I was like, yeah, I've got blue balls. You've got. <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. But you've got to sit in that. It's uncomfortable. It's not what you do is. To increase your stre stress resilience, you've got to keep head towards it and come back, head towards it and come back until you are sitting in the water for like five, ten minutes. Mm, yeah, yeah. So that's slow introduction. And that certainly makes you present when you are in the water. And when I do, I do coaching sessions for people to get them into water. I'm like, no, don't, don't. You, you're going to go into panic. You're going to go into panic. That little monkey mind is going to start saying, you can't do it. Don't do it. Get out of the water. That conversation that we have, and I'm like, no, just focus on the breath. Focus yeah. on the breath. That will calm you down in every instance. The breath is the elixir of life. 
No, definitely. Calm yourself down with your breath. You're not going to want to because you're going to want to go to the panic. Because panic's going to set in, especially when you get into ice cold water. Breath. And I'm just like, focus on your breath. Focus on your breath. And then after a minute, they're like, oh my God, I can do it. Say, yes, you can. You can. You genuinely can. Yeah. Um, and the power of now sounds sounds really interesting in terms of, you know, the, 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 what you mentioned about overthinking or... Sometimes I see, I, I, I know it as like people struggling, like the struggle switch goes on and you get those two bits of your brain in conflict with each other. Yeah. Um, um, and also the stuff about what, like that exposure and around, yeah, you, people learning to, to not push things away, but accept and sit with uncomfortable thoughts and feelings sometimes to help the process of, can be grief, can be anything. So I don't know if you want to just sort yeah. of expand on some of your stuff there. Uh, yeah, no, I'm a big believer in change your thoughts, change your life. It's everything's a, everything is is a symptom of thought. Thought precedes everything. So it's not that you're stressed; you're thinking something that's making you stressed. You're reacting to something that's making you stressed. And that language that we say of "I am stressed," the second you say "I am stressed," your brain's got to answer that with a response and go, "All right." Last time, let's go through the roller decks. Last time you were stressed, oh, this is what we gave you, which is those emotions. So you're you're, you're signaling it. It's it's kind of like a signal box. It goes through the, the the roller decks. Let me just pull it out. I am stressed. Right, let's give you that emotion. And what you're doing is you, by thought, you're creating the cortisol hormone, which just absolutely pushes through your system. But you're creating that on a on a daily basis. So the premise of dipping is you're creating stress. And you're managing the stress. And it gives you the tools to manage the stress. Once you realise, I mean, there is nothing pleasurable at a certain time about going and dipping. It is horrible. And I'm sure, Rachel, I mean, there's, there, it's horrible. But you're managing that stress. So if you can manage, manage realise, I can manage myself getting into cold water in a bikini in February or a swimsuit for the fellas. And you can sit in that, calm your thoughts, calm your reactions, and sit in it for five, six minutes. I'm not going to say 10, 15 minutes, whatever you're up to, but five minutes. Then get out. You have managed a stressful situation in your life. And they say it takes six, six dips for you to get more or less climatized to do it because you're going to start getting yourself into that stressful state going in the water. And you start managing it by controlling it by how you're thinking. Instead of I am stressed, thinking, no, this is, this is not bad. I'm all right, I can do this. You're then starting to manage stress in your life, which is putting you back in control. That's how it puts you back in control. Dipping is a stressful situation. And you're managing that. So if you can manage that in your life, imagine what else you can manage. Because you'll start, and I've got friends who do dip with me, like, do you know what? Normally I'd go shopping. And I want to punch somebody in the throat because they annoyed me. Now I've started dipping. I've realized, actually, that is not a stressful situation. Because stress is how you react to other people. And if you're, if you're giving your emotions the control of somebody else, I don't know Paul. I've never seen Paul before in my life. But if I'm the person that's saying, do you know what? Paul's looking at me weird. He's annoying me. That's not a Paul problem. That's a me problem from not being able to understand myself. They're my emotions. They're my feelings. And I'm in control of that. And that's what dipping does. I genuinely believe that's what dipping does. It does for me. And when I'm coaching people into it, it does it for them as well. So when, when you um, had this realisation through meditation um, that was helping you, was it as soon as you went into the water, you realised, did that have an impact on you going out and doing the life coaching and helping others? Or how new is the, how, how much of a nuance is that for you, for you really? Uh, I, if I'm honest, I don't know what nuance means, but new experience I know what I mean, means. I meant that. I was trying to, I was trying to be clever. <laughs> I thought that's what really. you meant. I'm like, I don't even mean the new experience. I don't even know, I don't even know, I don't even know why I said nuance, but yeah, it's on YouTube now, so everyone's going to see it. <laughs> So I've been a mind management coach for two years since I lost my job because of COVID. Yeah. So cruising stopped. Cruising yeah. absolutely stopped. It was it was one of those big industries. 
uh, that was hit by it. And um, I, it was because I've been doing like cognitive behavioral therapy, NLP, and I knew how to manage my, my thoughts. I know how to put my monkey mind in control. Literally, I'll use a term for you, like a duck to water. I switched, see what I did there? That was off the cuff. So I switched my mindset from, right, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm doing this. This is what's going to pay you the mortgage. This is what's going to help. And honestly, the, 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 the feelings of wellness you get from knowing that, you, you, I mean, some of the messages from my clients of, oh, I, oh my God, I can't believe I can go back to work and I can do this now. So I'm no longer overthinking. And it's just, I don't know, manage my anxiety. I don't have anxiety anymore. All because we've changed the way that you think. And it changes your life. And it, I suppose I'm one of those annoying people that was like, I was glad for the change. I, I took as many positives out of the COVID change that I could possibly take to create something new. But that's just, that's mindset, I suppose. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a nice thing. So that's what I've been doing for the past two years. Um, and it is about changing your thoughts, change your life. I mean that sincerely from a place of meditation. And I, I know you don't see this on the screen. I know I'm saying this to Rachel. If there's ever if there's, if there's ever a guy you would not think he's a meditator, it's this guy is <laughs> six foot two. I'm three feet wide. Uh, I do strongman training. Um, I have a little quiff on the top of my grey hair that's gone. I mean, there's literally if, I'm, I'm not an entertainer by trade, I suppose. If there's ever a guy that you would not believe <laughs> meditates on a daily basis. It's this guy. It really is this guy. Yeah. And, and, and in terms of connecting people and bringing people together, there's two other things I'd, I'd love you to tell me a little bit more about, and that is the radio station, uh, yep. the work that you've done, and um, also the um, the actual group and how that how that's grown or where it started and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So um, I was invited through one of my clients, actually. They, they had a connection. I'd been helping them with something, and they got me a connection to be a guest on a radio show. So I went on there to show people how to stop negative thoughts. We have automatic negative thoughts. So I got a 10-minute spot, and I'll do that for anybody uh, here. I really don't mind. I can show you how to stop your, uh, your, your automatic negative thoughts. And, and we can create pets, which is positive, empowering thoughts instead. Um, I did a, I did a, <laughs> I, just, I did a five, I think it was about a 10 minute thing. And he just kept, I mean, the radio host of the, the, who was the owner of the radio station, kept asking me questions. He went, I says, I get loads of guests on, but you were just different. I said, oh, that's really nice. I really appreciate that. And he offered me my own radio show for his radio station uh, about two weeks later. So three, three Thursdays every month, working for men's radio station. Uh, there's two radio stations, uh, there's two radio shows. One is uh, Chatter About the Chatter, Monkey Mind Relaxation, where I get guests on uh, and we talk about those internal conversations that we have that drive us to depression, anxiety, overthinking. Uh, and then I'm in another radio show with my co-host, uh, Graham Nichols, and we've got The Meanings of Life, uh, which discusses mental health uh, issues. The last show we just did is You Don't Have Anxiety, You're Creating It which was a clickbait title to really, really help people that to, to let you know that the anxiety that we have is created by thought and the way that we think and it can be, can be managed, uh, manageable. So we got loads of uptake on that one. And believe it or not, it's a men's uh, mental health radio station and most of our listeners are ladies. <laughs> like, we, like we talked about the men's dipping group, because... I will. If I, I don't know if anyone's here from that from that dipping group, there's a dipping group in Edinburgh called the uh, Edinburgh Blue Balls, and I saw their group and I joined the group. And I, thought, oh, I just can't get over there because it takes about an hour to drive there from where I am. You've got to go all the way around the coast, and I, I couldn't make it. And I, I see like there's 50 guys dipping every Sunday right over the water, literally from where I dip and stuff like that. Um, and I'm just like, I wish I could be there, I wish I could be there. So I created a, a Facebook group. There's 200 people in the Facebook group, the five dippers at Men's Mental Health Dipping Society. And it's more or less all ladies asking if they can dip. <laughs> and I, honestly, I'm, I'm trying really, even, even when it's with my clients and most of my clients are ladies. I've now started getting a lot of gentlemen clients and I'm just like, come dipping. 
come dip in, I'll get you past what you're going through by proving you're getting in the water in February and getting out. It will change your life. It will change your life. So that's the the, the Facebook group, which I'm, I'm Scott, you're, you're a part of, and which is what you, you found me through. Um, yeah, I suppose it's hard for guys to, to open up. I, I'm completely understanding of how hard it is for guys to, to want to open up. So I just keep posting pictures of me in water with a smiley face, hoping it invites people to come down for a dip. <laughs> well, I will help it. anyone into the water. <laughs> it, will be the, it will be one of those things that can change your life. Well, definitely, if I was up there, um, yeah, that would be something that I'd be looking to do. And at some point, I'm hoping we, me and Paul, in particular, is involved with the charity. We've, we've been on a road trip out to Ireland to meet uh, some guys and go swimming over there, which was absolutely nice. amazing. Uh, nice. And in Northern Ireland, and um, yeah, and I've met, we've met Rachel for a swim. So at some point, we hope to get up that way. Um, but yeah, yeah, what you talked about, that 10 minute thing that you uh, have done, I'm, I'm, I'd be up for you just running through that, if that would work. What the 10 minute, what's, oh, what the automatic negative thoughts? Rachel's got a thought. Or the stress I've resilience. Got. I've got, look, see, that's what I was saying. I know I was saying to Rachel, I mean, literally, I, the unfortunate thing about it is me is I will, everything that I, I do with my clients, I'll, I'll do it live. You can take this away. Uh, like that. So, you yeah. Today was about stress resilience, I think, which was we were going to, once you take your unconscious to your conscious, you can make a conscious decision to change. But you have to bring your unconscious to your conscious before you can make a decision to change. So it was going to be doing the conscious rules of, for anyone that says, I have stress in my life, I am stressed. And it was basically, I have a piece of paper, right down the middle, one line, at one side of the paper, you have to write down what makes you stressed, what has to happen for you to be stressed. And on the other side of the paper, what has to happen for you not to be stressed. The one and the other. So this is the conscious rules. You can do this for so many things, but let's just do it for stress. What has to happen as a headline for you to be stressed? And on the other side, what has to happen for you not to be stressed? That's your two headlines. I'm, I'm scribbling then, away here. I don't know if I'm supposed to be, but I am scribbling away. That's fine. So just stick to the first. What's on your first side, Scott? What's on the first? What, what has to happen for you to be stressed? Is that right? Yeah, this is really bad of me, but it's hunger. Right. Okay. So the only thing you've got there is hunger. Now, oh, oh no, right I've got there. others, but the first one was hunger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. For everyone, write down what has to happen. What makes you stressed? What, what has to happen to make you stressed? Yeah. Write it down. You might have one thing, you might have 17 things. Just take time, whatever you need. Yeah, I've got five or six already. Cool. Now, on the what has to happen you not to be stressed what has to be in place for you not to be stressed Yeah, I've just about. So, looking at your rules, everyone, Rachel, Nikki, I can't see you, but I'm guessing you're still there. Paul, I'm not sure you were writing. I think you were trying to see into my soul. I could tell. <laughs> I was meditating. I will come back to that. I'm on your <laughs> so 
look at your list. Uh, Scott, just for an example, what I, what makes what has to happen for you to be stressed? What has to happen for you to be stressed? Well, I've put things like hungry, kids, hungry. kids playing up. Kids playing up. News, like the news sometimes gets stressed about overthinking things that I've seen in the news. Yep. Social media, going on social media and see, sometimes social media is all right, but, you know, other other yep. occasions seeing stuff and thinking everyone else's life's ace. Um, comparison about, is the thief, the stealer of joy. Comparison is the stealer of joy. Remember, unless you use social media to your benefit, it will drive you insane. Yeah. We as human beings get stuck in the comparison jail already. And I was, I was, I always think about really good quotes that I can use. So in a world for a nice comparison quote for you, in a world where I could be the rock, um, I can't think of celebrities' names, Vin Diesel or um, other famous people, I choose to be pretty good with. Yeah. Because that's all I can be. So, Scott, in a world where you could be whoever you want, be Scott Clayton, because that's what makes you fantastic. I agree. Um, so, looking and, at your uh, rules for what makes you stressed, can you see how easy it is for you to be stressed? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Now, go on the other side of your rules. What has to happen for you not to be stressed? It's that feeling of contentment. Um walking away from some of the things that that we um it was quite easy looking at those and thinking what counters them do you know what i mean in a way um so yeah for example instead of the kids winding me up actually having the time to sit and play with the kids and things like that do you know what i mean and and, and sort of yeah. connect with them um and in terms of being hungry eating but not just eating just stay just looking after myself not getting to the point where I'm absolutely starving hungry, which I do some days, you know, like you're busy working, you suddenly go like, what have I got here? Um, and it's that That's a flow thing. state, by the way. Scott, that is a flow state. That is a fantastic place to be. When you get yourself into a flow state, you get yourself into a state of times non-existent and it just goes because you're, you're yeah. engrossed in an activity that is just hard enough to give you enough stress to get you to, oh, I'm enjoying this, this is something different. Yeah, and, and time disappears and that's a flow state which is a good thing and a lot of the times your hunger will be thirst so always remember that yeah a lot of the time yeah, your hunger should. will be thirst yeah and i think i think with that flow state because working from home for me has been brilliant at times and other things stressful but because you're at home and you get into that flow state which you just described and time passes you look up and suddenly your world switches around very quickly. There's no car journey. There's no, nothing like that. So it's it's understanding the the uh, new world around that really, and 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 preparing yourself. Yeah. So if your rules for being stressed are really easy, you're going to find yourself stressed the majority of the time. If your rules are really hard for you not to be stressed. Because once we do this, especially when I'm working with people who say I'm constantly stressed, most people's rules for being stressed is somebody looks at me the wrong way, then I'm stressed for the rest of the day, mm. right? If your rules are so easy, by looking at your line, if your rules are too easy, you're going to find your stress quite a lot. If your rules for you not being stressed are really hard, and I, I have a lot of people say, oh, for me not to be stressed, 17 rules are in place, then you're constantly going to be stressed. So you have to change your rules around and you can say, right, all right, now I'm looking at that, that piece of paper of like, well, actually, this is what makes me stress. For me to not feel stressed, let's just put some simple rules in. Okay, I won't be stressed until this happens, this happens, this happens. And putting a rule that's quite hard because what happens is that tomorrow, the, the, the tomorrow you're going to go and something will happen, you think, oh, I'm stressed. And then you go, actually, no, I'm not stressed because my new rules of I won't be stressed until X, Y, and Z happens is now in place. So you brought your unconscious rules to what's making you stressed visually. You brought them to your center, create a new rule because you're going to react like you have been for such a long time because we're creatures of habit, but you're bringing your unconscious to your conscious so that the next time you say, oh, I'm stressed, you go, actually, 
no, I'm not stressed because this, this, and this has not happened yet. And you're starting to manage your stress. Mm. Stress will come from a thought. So what are you thinking about that's causing you stress? Now, there's always seeds of thought that we have. For a lot of people, it's, I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy. And this manifests in our fears that we have. So if there's a little seed of a thought and say, oh, I just don't feel good. You start looking to prove that right. So if you're saying, oh, I feel stressed today, you'll answer the question, well, your little monkey pops up and goes, well, why am I stressed? Because you're an idiot, because this has happened, and this has happened. So your brain <laughs> answers the question that you're asking in thought. Mm. And it starts creating this cycle of beliefs within ourselves that start manifesting in, in, in stress. But I always ask, what are you thinking that's making you stressed? So instead of being, I am stressed, what am I thinking? Stressful. Because mm -hmm. it's always thought first. And once you can find out what you're thinking that's making you stressed, question if that's real or not. Yeah. It won't, it won't be. I'm, I think I'm definitely going to read the... Uh... Uh, I, don't know. I don't think that's from the power of now. now. That's yeah. not from the power of now. That's just a that's just a me thing. It sounds that really similar. Like a lot of it sounds really similar to the act stuff. Um, Dr. Russell Harris is the one that, that that I like from from that kind of stuff. But yeah, it just they, they, they do sort of um, a lot of these therapies fold onto each other, don't they? And stuff. Absolutely. CBT is it CBT type type stuff that you're... I do NLP. I'm a big believer in neuro linguistic programming. Yeah. In myself, uh, for others, what we focus on, we will 100 percent attract. Um, e even when it comes to focus, asking you like, what 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 are you scared of happening? What are you what would you do anything to avoid? Mm. When when you're practicing avoiding stomach what are you doing you're looking for it so you can yeah. avoid it so you're actually looking for whatever it is the fear or is, is it around this corner is it around this corner so you're looking for it so you can avoid it so you're bringing more into it live so you have to realize actually that's a fear i get that i'll just look over to this side because i know that that's going on yeah and at the end of the day our brains are designed to look for that fear aren't they it's like primeval man stuff so it's like yeah your brain your brain's purpose is to keep you alive. Yeah. Avoid pain because pain could cause you death. The brain's purpose has a negativity bias. It has to remember the bad stuff you've done that's happened to you in life. Whatever you feel has created trauma within your life, you will look to avoid it. Yeah. So if you're going to get yourself in ice cold water, you are literally putting yourself under pain, under duress, under stress, and you're managing it. Yeah. No, there's been some interesting folk that have come on and sort of said that, you know, like, um, I think it was ice baths and stuff, but um, early mental health practices were forcing people into them. Obviously, there's a, it's a good, there's good reason for that to stop, but the science around it is um, still proven, you know, so, yeah. Um, cool. I don't know if we want to just open it up to other people's questions guys um absolutely i know normally we'd put things in the chat and all that kind of stuff but um brilliantly engaging and i've got more questions but i feel selfish being the only one at the moment <laughs> asking um so no I'm problem. open it up and see wh whether any of you guys want to unmute and just ask could a question it's a help i just want to apologize for staring into your soul could it was <laughs> Really, really interesting. I think the, the thing I did have quite a lot of, um, I suppose, bad work stuff a couple of years ago, and um, I uh, a neighbour died on me, did CPR and didn't work. So I kind of, in my mind, hit that rock bottom and lots of problems. And I did the yoga in the first lockdown, or before the first lockdown, we were going really, really, really regular. So the meditation for me has been the one along with the cold water. And I suppose that correlation for me about that deep breathing, and like you said, overcome everything. Have you found that? Because it's the same for me. It's the same kind of um, methodology going into that water, getting into that breathing, that relaxed state to be able to go into the water. Yeah. So 
Um, the breath is what gets me past the panic. There's a cat uh, running around. I do apologise. I, I don't know if you can start hearing it meowing. Um, so for me, still the stressful part of, of getting in the water is not the water to the balls. I say balls, that's a Scottish word. It's, um, it's the base of my spine up to the middle of my back. That's really, that's the bit that up to my neck that's the bit that just sends it's still a horrible experience and that's the that's that panic kicks in monkey mind starts thinking save 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 and i'm like no you just go in with a breath you're managing that thoughts thoughts you're managing that stress and i'm getting in the water and that experiencing that it's that's that's what it is for me that's the meditation part focusing on the breath because that's the only thing that i've actually got control of yeah i think so i think i've I've had a, a bad year last year. I was quite ill with COVID. I had a bike accident. So I've not got in the water for a year um, because I've had lots of surgeries. But um, it's the meditation and I can't actually wait to get back in the water. Um, but every time me and Scott have tried to go, I've been at work and things have got in the way. So it's getting to the point where um, I'm either buying a plunge pool or I'm just going to go and jump in some water. Um, yeah, yeah no, it is really good. You're going to have to try a um, matlock bath, Paul. At least that would be take the edge off it to start with. Well, funnily enough, our friend who played football with last night said he might be going on Sunday, so I might be uh, going on Sunday just Is for... Is there a... baths in matlock? Hmm. I used to go to matlock as a kid growing up. Yeah. Yeah, they're just... heated, it's, um, thermal heated, aren't they? Yeah, yeah it's, it's really good. 16 degrees through winter. It's like, it's really... It is nice. It's, it's yeah, like you say, it's... Um, he enjoyed crossing over didn't he from going and having a couple of a couple of swims up there hasn't he and yeah. then he's he's actually got in the other week with um with me on a sunday in um one of the local lakes he put a wetsuit on but you know so he's, he's um next time he's saying he's probably going to go in without his wetsuit yeah. on so it's, yeah, yeah so he's going for it next time and for i think me, it's, all, bit... it's all about the gloves the yeah. gloves and the toes because it's just That's what but he... all the rest of it is breathable but it's just when all you can think about is the fact your hands are freezing, you can't appreciate how great the situation is. You're just feeling, you're thinking, I'm worried, is this a cold injury brewing? And you start to feel miserable. So shoot, booties and booties and gloves. I'm pretty much invincible. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big believer, and we've been doing it more and more, I, sunrise dips. I, the gratitude... Mm. Of, of sitting in a sunrise and the, the thing is in the winter the sunrise is not until 8.45 especially in Scotland yeah. so it's not like I'm going down at 5 o'clock in the morning because I probably wouldn't do that um, so as the, as the lights start getting earlier and earlier I'll be like alright I'll just have a mid-morning uh, <laughs> dip but the winter you get the, the gratitude of a sun and I'm a big believer in gratitude and I mean real gratitude I think gratitude's a word that's so overused and misunderstood because it's about having gratitude when you are absolutely in the, the, the absolute depths of despair, when you are completely overwhelmed by the negativity and the absolute shit that goes on in people's life. There's, there's no taking away of life is a journey. It's absolutely pants. I'm, there's, a positive mindset is not about every day's is unicorn farts and smelling the roses. It's not in any way whatsoever. A positive mindset is... Tomorrow could be a terrible day, but I've got the tools to get through it. That's what mindset is. It's not everything's perfect. No, it's the opposite. It's like nothing's perfect, and I'm good with that because I've got the skills to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. It's that resilience, isn't it, that you're, you're instantly yeah. in people. Um, what was, could if you don't mind asking the, uh, the, the pets, the positive, empowering thoughts? Is the so, a really cool way to, to, to see it, and for anyone that's it basically overthinking is a habit. It's a habit of fear, and, it, and you go through. So you've got a simple way to think about it is everybody, myself included, Rachel, Scott, your listeners, have automatic negative thoughts. They don't disappear. You're a human being. It's about knowing when it comes in, I don't need to deal with that one. It's not real. I'm going to let that one go. We get caught up with these thoughts. And trust me, I'm a pretty positive guy, but I still have some thoughts. And I'm like, where did that one come from? <laughs> I'm like, whoa, I'll have to dodge that one. So um, what saved my life, and I think it could save other people's life, 
if people realise the value of what I'm going to genuinely say for you is get an elastic band, put it onto your wrist, and um, every time you have a negative thought and you're caught in that cycle of negative thoughts, automatic negative thoughts, snap the elastic band. Snapping the elastic band causes a pain. Your brain doesn't like pain. Your brain will start going, actually, last time I had a thought, there was a snap. That's hurt. A lot of people, when you first start doing this, you'll realize you're snapping your elastic band about 147 times in a day. And a lot of people will be like, oh my God, I just literally am an automatically negative person. So you have to switch your thinking. So you sn snap the elastic band and think, right, what can I think of? So creating a positive experience that you can remember. Paul, what, what's a nice positive memory from when you were growing up? Oh, uh, playing at the beach, times around the, um, um, yeah, the beach we used to go and I've gone back as an adult um, to Wells next to the sea. So all my favourite things, and I do use this as a positive mindset. So yeah. if I'm having a bad time, I walk through the trees because my things are trees and water. There's a mature forest and then you go through the mature forest and you're onto a beautiful beach. Absolutely. That's my... That is your choice. You've created a choice to have a negative thought, snap the elastic band. Your elastic band is your remote control. Turn over the channel because negativity is it, it's powerful and it's your brain's not supposed to remember the positive experiences. It's not supposed to remember the last time you enjoyed ice cream. It didn't cause you any danger. It didn't cause you any pain. You're not wired physically and mentally to remember the good experiences, which is why we get caught in these thought loops. And I always say to people, what's, what, what's a TV program? Rachel, if you don't mind joining in on this one, what's a TV program you absolutely hate? When you're in the house, one TV program you cannot stand. I don't know, one of those where they're digging up digging up Alaska looking for gold. Right, perfect. Cool beans. What's the TV program you like to watch? What you absolutely adore? I don't know, detective something or other. Uh, a there's, a, there's a good one that's just come on just now. Um, oh, God, what was it called? Responder. Oh, yeah. Responder. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. We only see if one you, thing of it, though. <laughs> if you were sat in the house with a remote control in on, on watching the TV, would you sit and watch D uh, Alaska digging for gold? <laughs> Not if I had the digit in my hand, no. You've now got a remote control to change your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Put on Responder. If you enjoy yeah. Responder, you've got a choice. Your elastic band is your remote control. You've got to change the channel. And what you're doing when you're changing the channel is you're creating new neural pathways for your thinking. Because if you repeat the pattern of thinking, you're going to keep recreating digging for gold in Alaska. Which yes. sounds like a terrible TV program. So if you keep the program's all right, it's just that they trash they trash the environment, which is what annoys me about it. So using <laughs> your metaphor, if you were to carry on negative uh, negative thinking, you're going to destroy your landscape. I'm not, really? saying yeah. I'm not saying you're a negative thinker, <laughs> but that's the I'm not massively. You are no, you are repeating a pattern of thought, and it creates science proves that it just creates uh, the same thought patterns. So you're just going to yeah. keep repeat, repeating them. But the second you start switching it and creating that feeling of I remember growing up, going to the beach mm. through the forest, you're creating a different neural pathway, which is more positive. And you can, not possible to think negative and positive at the same time, you have a choice. Until mm. you know you have a choice, that's the unfortunate part for so many people. Mm. And I think that's the, the, you know, it's really interesting, um, you know, people unhooking people from, um, like you say, things coming in that, that take them off into, into a place almost like subconsciously and all that kind of stuff, getting them more aware unhooking them there are really simple things that you can do a lot of um 
and 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 I think it's going to be really interesting in the future as we move forward how how health services are going to going to help get these messages out to people. It's great that like you know you're doing the work and a step further than that, which is brilliant. Um, but I'm really interested in, in in you know social prescribing and how that's going to work going forward. And 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 um, I know Amy's in Fife has had uh, GPs referring people down to her swim group and things like that, which is really nice. I don't know what, what have you managed to get relationships like that yet up there or no there's been quite a few mentioned to in the newspapers about the dipping group for the men's mental health dipping group but there is uh, you've got to uh, and that's and that's one of those things i suppose you've got so and i think there is an abundance of help for, for people with mental health i think people sometimes unfortunately choose not to because we can get stuck in that little bit of a woe is me and, and, and pity party. And trust me, I owe my hands up. I was stuck in a pity party yeah. for a great, great month because of some of that happened. There's like Andy's Man Club, which is a phenomenal charity locally. There is, somebody contacted me the other day because they were solution based, no, they were counselors. And I had to decline going there because counseling just keeps repeating and yeah. listening. I'm not a counselor, I'm solution based, get you moving forward. I'm the kind of person that drags you out of it and pushes you in the, the direction you need to be. So I'm definitely solution based, um, and and a lot a lot of my clients actually have come from counselling and psychotherapists, but it's not moved them where they needed to. And I'm mm. I, 